Welcome to the GCP Resource Manager course. My name is Joseph Cava. I'm a software engineering professional specializing in cloud deployments. In this course, I will be showing you how to set up a cloud solution environment on Google Cloud Platform. If you have any questions, please email support at cloudacademy.com. This course is intended for GCP administrators. This is an important course to take if you are studying for the Google Associate Cloud Engineer exam. You do not need prior GCP experience to benefit from this course. Also, if you do not already have a Google Cloud account, then you could sign up for a free trial so you can set up a cloud solution environment yourself. In this course, we will start by setting up a new cloud project and user accounts. Next, we will create a new billing account and link it to our new project. Then, we will leverage the Cloud SDK to manage our new project. By the end of this course, you should be able to create new cloud projects, add users and assign them to roles, enable APIs for a project, provision Stackdriver accounts for monitoring project resources, add a billing account and create a budget, then manage organization resources using the Cloud SDK. We would love to get your feedback on this course, so please give it a rating when you're finished. Now, if you're ready to learn how to set up a cloud solution environment on Google Cloud Platform, let's get started. For the first section of this course, we will set up a cloud project and its associated accounts. In Google Cloud Platform, projects are a logical separation between software solutions. In simple terms, imagine an organization that operates two separate online products. These products would be broken into two separate projects. The organization will most likely run each of these products on separate budgets. The products may also leverage different GCP APIs and services, as well as have different employees assigned to work on them. As such, Project settings allow you to enable APIs and services, assign a billing account with different spending limits, add collaborators, and manage GCP resources. We will begin by creating our first project and assign users to predefined roles. Next, we will sign up for a cloud identity and link to our first administrative user. Then, we will learn how to enable APIs for use in our project and finally, we will provision a Stackdriver workspace to monitor our project resources. Let's start by creating a new cloud project. To create a new project, open the Manage Resources page by clicking the navigation menu at the top left of the Google Cloud Platform console. Then click IAM and Admin, then Manage Resources. The Resource Manager Project Create Permission is required to create a new project. By default, this permission is added to the entire domain for a new organization or for free trial users. Let's click the Create Project button to start creating our project. Enter the project name. If you have more than one billing account, a billing account field will appear underneath the project name. Choose the billing account for your project. Also, if you have more than one organization or folders, browse to the parent organization or folder in the location box. Now, click Create to create the project. You will need the project ID to interact with your project. For example, when you deploy your project, you will need to configure the project ID in local settings. The project ID is found on the project info card on the dashboard. To get to the project ID, open the dashboard by clicking on the Google Cloud Platform link, then click Home. Select your project. The project info card is typically on the top left unless it has been moved or hidden. If you have hidden your project info card, 
You can unhide it by clicking the Customize link at the top right of the page. On the Project Info card, you will see Project Name. That's the name you gave this project. And the Project ID, the identifier automatically generated by GCP. The Project ID must be globally unique across all GCP projects for all accounts. GCP uses the project name and possibly a randomly generated number to ensure uniqueness. If your project name is globally unique, it will be used as the project ID. Otherwise, GCP will append a random number to the project name to create a globally unique project ID. Some restricted words will not be included in the project ID if used in the project name. The project number is a globally unique number assigned by GCP. When you no longer have use for a project, you can delete it in the GCP console. A project is marked for deletion for 30 days before it is actually deleted. While the project is marked for deletion, it is unusable. However, its resources still count against your project quota until it is deleted. If a billing account is assigned to the project, the project may not be deleted until the current billing cycle ends. Within the 30-day shutdown period, you can restore the project. To shut down a project using the GCP console, open the project setting page by clicking the navigation menu, then click IAM and Admin, then click Settings, or simply click Go to Project Settings at the bottom of the Project Info card. Select the project to be deleted, then click the shutdown link at the top of the page. Enter the project ID, then click the shutdown link at the bottom of the shutdown dialog. A project can be restored before the end of the 30 day shutdown period. To restore a project, open the Manage Resources page by clicking on the Navigation menu, click IAM and Admin, then Manage Resources. Click the Resources Pending Deletion link at the bottom of the page. Check the projects to be restored, click the Restore link at the top of the page, then confirm that you wish to restore the projects by clicking the Restore link in the Restore Projects dialog. Now that our project has been created, we can add users and grant them access to our project through predefined roles. A user can be assigned to one or more roles granting them more access to project resources. The predefined roles that you can grant for a project are as follows. An owner has full access to all resources and all permissions for all resources. An editor has edit access to all resources and create access for all resources. A viewer has read access to all resources and get and list access for all resources. A browser has access to browse all resources in the project. Let's add a new user to our project. To add a new user to the project and assign them to one or more predefined roles, open the project settings page by clicking the navigation menu, then click IAM and admin, then IAM. Click the project to add the user to. Click the Add link at the top of the page. Enter the user's email address. Select the first role for the user. Add more roles as needed. Then click the Save button to add the user to the project.
To remove a user from a project, click the Remove link at the top of the page. Confirm that you wish to remove the user from the project. As a special note, you cannot delete the only owner of a project. There must be at least one owner for the project. To manage project users in our domain with more granular control in a single location, we will add cloud identity to our organization. To sign up for a cloud identity account, open the cloud identity page by clicking the navigation menu, then click IAM and admin, then identity and organization. Then click the sign up button. Click the next button to begin. Enter your business name and the number of employees, including you. Then click the next button. Choose your country or region. Enter your current email address. Enter your domain name. Click Next to set up the domain account. Enter your first and last name. Then enter the username for the first administrative user, which is probably you. Then enter the password. Confirm that you are not a robot. Then click Agree and Create Account. Once your account has been created, click Go to Setup. You will be asked to authenticate your new domain user account. Now we're in Setup. To verify domain ownership, click the Start button. Log in to your domain host website, then open the control panel for your domain. Copy the value to be pasted into your domain text record, then add the new text record to your domain. Now check that you added the text verification record, then click that you saved the text verification record. Then click Verify Domain. Now that our domain ownership has been verified, we can create users. Enter the first and last name of your new user. Now enter their new email address. Once you're done adding users, click the Next button. To send emails to your new users to notify them that they have a new email address in your new domain account, enter their email address and then click Send Emails. Setup's complete. Now we can continue to the Cloud Console. Once we're back in the Cloud Console, we'll have to accept the Terms of Service. Now we're at the Identity and Organization screen, and we can migrate any settings that we might have had from our previous account. Next, we will learn how to enable APIs for our project. Google Cloud Platform provides several project building blocks in the form of APIs. APIs range from storage to machine learning. Many of the APIs needed for common tasks are enabled by default, such as storage. To extend the services enabled, you can enable additional APIs. For example, suppose you are writing an application that interacts with the user's Google Calendar.
to add or schedule events on their Google Calendar programmatically, you would enable the Google Calendar API. You can find a complete list of GCP APIs at https cloud.google.com slash APIs. When you enable an API, monitoring pages and billing properties, if billing is enabled, are added to your project. To enable an API for your project using the console, open the APIs and Services page by clicking the Navigation menu, then click APIs and Services. From the Projects list, select your project. You will see the APIs that are already enabled for that project. Click the Enable APIs and Services link at the top of the page. Search for or browse to the API you want to add to your project. Click on the API card, then click the Enable button. As a note, some APIs have different processes for enabling them for your project. Some will ask you to accept their terms of service. Others may require additional sign-up. If you no longer have use for an API, you can disable it from the GCP console. To disable an API for your project using the console, click the Disable link at the top of the page. Now, we will provision Stackdriver to monitor our GCP resources. Stackdriver is a monitoring service that allows you to view performance, uptime, and the health of the resources in your project. Stackdriver allows you to monitor GCP projects as well as AWS accounts in the same workspace. First, we will create a new Stackdriver workspace for our project. To add a Stackdriver workspace to your project, open the Stackdriver monitoring page by clicking the navigation menu, then scroll to Stackdriver, then click Monitoring. From the Projects list, select your project. Select Create a New Workspace. Select your project in the Select Workspace dialog. Click the Continue button. Skip AWS Setup. Then click the Continue button. Select your Report Interval. and click Continue, then click the Launch Monitoring button. Workspace Settings allows you to add new users to your workspace and manage monitored projects and accounts. To access Workspace Settings, from the Project menu at the top of the page, Click to select Workspace Settings. Now that our project is all set up with users and monitoring, we are ready to move on to the next step. For the next section of this course, we will set up a new billing account and link it to our project. When signing up for the Google Cloud Platform free tier trial, you get $300 worth of credit to use for GCP paid services for up to 12 months. The free tier also includes an always free feature, which includes commonly used GCP services with limited access. If you wish to continue using paid services after your trial has expired, you can convert to a paid account. Before we can add a billing account to our project, we must first add a new billing account to our GCP account. 
To add a new billing account to our GCP account, open the billing page by clicking the navigation menu, then click Billing. Click the Manage Billing Accounts button, enter the name of your new billing account, select your country, review the information, then click Submit and Enable Billing. Now that we have a billing account enabled, we can link it to our project. There are several ways this can be done. Here's one way. To link our project to our new billing account, open the billing page by clicking the navigation menu, then click billing. Make sure the project you wish to change is selected at the top of the page. Click the link a billing account button, choose the billing account, then click the Set Account button. To change the billing account for a project, open the billing page if it's not already open. The overview will list the projects linked to this billing account. Click the Menu button to the right of the project you want to change. Click Change Billing, then choose the billing account you want to change to. Then click the Set Account button. To disable a billing account for a project, click the menu to the right of the project you want to change, click Disable Billing, then confirm by clicking the Disable Billing button. Now let's create a budget and alerts for our project. Budgets allow you to track and receive alerts for the amount spent on a monthly basis. You can create a budget for a specified amount or to match last month's spend. Administrators and users with billing account roles will receive email alerts when the amount spent exceeds various levels. The default alert levels are 50%, 90%, and 100% of the budget amount configured. And you can add and change the alerting levels to suit your needs. Each month, the amount spent resets back to zero. Keep in mind, Budgets do not cap or put limits on your monthly spending. These are merely alerts to help you monitor the amount spent so you can take the appropriate action. To create a budget for a project, open the billing page. Click Budgets and Alerts. Click the Create a Budget button. Give your new budget a name. Choose the billing account. Choose specified amount or last month's spend. Enter a dollar amount if specifying an amount. Set your budget alert levels. Then click the Save button. Next, we will create a billing export for our project. Billing exports allow you to have your usage and cost information exported to a database, BigQuery, where data can be gathered, filtered, and sorted for further analysis. To enable billing exports for a project, open the billing page. Click Billing Exports. Click the Edit Settings button. Choose the project. Create a BigQuery dataset by clicking the Go to BigQuery button. Now in BigQuery, click the menu button to the right of your project, then click Create New Dataset. Enter your dataset ID, letters, numbers, and underscores. Choose a data location. Choose a data expiration. Click the OK button. 
back in the billing export, choose your project, choose your data set, click the Save button. Finally, for our last section of this course, we will set up the Cloud SDK and run a few commands to manage our project locally. The Cloud SDK allows you to run commands in your terminal to interact with GCP services. These commands also allow you to create scripts that automate deployment and service configuration. Here, we will use the Cloud SDK to install components into our development environment, configure authentication, then set our default project. The prerequisites for the Cloud SDK are Python 2.7 and Java if you're going to install Java tools for Google App Engine. To download the Cloud SDK, navigate your browser to https cloud.google.com slash sdk. If you are on Windows, follow these instructions. Click the link to download the Cloud SDK installer. Locate the installer in your Downloads folder or launch it from the downloaded files in your browser. Follow the installer prompts. Check Start Google Cloud SDK Shell. Also check Run gcloud init to configure the Cloud SDK. This will run gcloud init in the terminal window. From here, the process for initializing the Cloud SDK is very similar on any operating system. I am on Mac OS, so I will demonstrate the full installation and gcloud init process on Mac OS. For Mac OS and Linux, verify that you have Python, open a terminal window, at the prompt, run Python dash v. If you do not have Python installed, install it before you continue. Download the installer for your version of Mac OS, extract the downloaded archive, then open a terminal window in the archive folder. At the prompt, run install.sh. Then restart your shell to have the changes take effect. To allow the Cloud SDK to access your projects in your account, you must authorize it to do so. This authentication is very similar on any operating system. Back at the command prompt, run gcloud init. When asked, would you like to log in, type Y for yes. Your browser will open to sign in with Google. Choose an account to log in with. Allow the Cloud SDK to manage GCP by clicking the Allow button. Your browser will open. You are now authenticated with the Google Cloud SDK page. Go back to the command prompt. Choose the project to use. Now the Cloud SDK is initialized and ready for use. Many corporations run behind a proxy or a firewall. If you are behind a proxy or a firewall, you will need to configure the Cloud SDK with proxy settings to access GCP. Get the proxy settings from your network administrator. Once you have the proxy settings, configure the Cloud SDK to use the proxy. To configure the Cloud SDK to use a proxy, configure the proxy type in the terminal window by typing gcloud config set proxy type, then the proxy type. The proxy types supported are HTTP, HTTP no tunnel, SOX4, and SOX5. Configure the proxy IP address. Do this with gcloud config set proxy address, and then type in the proxy IP address. To configure the proxy port, use gcloud config set proxy port, 
and type the proxy port. If your proxy requires a username and password, configure the proxy username with gcloud set proxy username and type the username. Then configure the password with gcloud set proxy password and the password. Now that our cloud SDK is all set up, Let's run some commands to see how this works. First, we will run the help command. This will give us a page instructing how to use the gcloud command and its many options. Open a terminal window and type gcloud space dash dash help. As you can see, this is a pretty comprehensive list. When learning, it is easier to read this online. Here is the URL for the gcloud reference. Now we will list the components available for install. We'll use gcloud components list. This command provides the list of components that have been installed and those that are available for install. Also, instructions for install and removal are given. For example, I want to develop a Java application running on Google App Engine. To do this, we will use the install component command to install the Google App Engine Java component. We'll use gcloud components install app engine Java. Before components are installed, the list of dependencies and other components that will be installed in addition to the component we specified will be displayed. We will continue by typing Y for yes, the status of the install is printed, then it is done. Over time, new versions of the components we have installed will have been released. To update our installed components, we run the update components command. This command will go through all of your installed components and update any that have newer versions. Later, if we have no use for App Engine Java, we can use the remove components command. As developers, we often work with more than a single application on our workstations. This is where configurations come in. Suppose we are working with two different projects. We will create a configuration for each of them with different settings, then switch between them as needed. Configurations allow us to create settings for the individual projects we will work with. With a configuration, we can manage different projects with different settings. Let's create a configuration for my first project named my first config. We will use gcloud config configurations create my first config. This will create and activate our configuration for my first config. Now we will create a second configuration for our other project. This will create and activate our configuration for my second config. Now I want to switch back to my first config. To do this, I will use the activate command. To see the list of configurations we have added to our environment, we will use the config list command. Our configuration settings are displayed along with the active configuration name. Now let's set the default project for my first config to my first project. To do this, we will use the set project command. When we run the config list command again, 
we will see that we now have a default project configured. That's it. I hope you enjoyed learning about GCP resource management. Let's do a quick review of what you learned. First, we created a new GCP project. GCP projects are a logical separation between products or solutions. Each project can have different APIs enabled as well as have different users and developers assigned to them. Projects have a unique ID assigned to them and you use the project ID to interact with your project resources. For example, when deploying your project, you will specify the project ID. Users can be granted access to a project by assigning predefined roles for owner, editor, or view permissions. More granular control over project roles is achieved through cloud identity. Google Cloud Platform provides several project building blocks in the form of APIs. APIs range from storage to machine learning. APIs can be enabled on a per project basis. The free tier includes always free services once your free trial has ended. A billing account allows you to convert your free tier account to a paid account. The paid account still includes the always free feature. Billing exports can be configured to send usage data to BigQuery for further analysis. With the Cloud SDK, you can configure project services and install components by running commands using the interactive command line interface. Also, these commands can be used in continuous integration environments to automate deployments and service configuration. To learn more about GCP resource management, please read Google's GCP documentation. Also, watch for new GCP courses on Cloud Academy. We are always publishing new courses. Please give this course a rating, and if you have any questions or comments, please let us know. Thanks and keep on learning.